Hi everyone, it's Jeff from Avada here. With Avada Forms you can easily create all manner of forms for your website using the power of the Avada Form Builder and the various form elements. Each of these elements has their own dock covering all the specific options. But in this video we'll be giving you an overview of the form elements as a whole and what they can do in your forms. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, Click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. I've made a brand new form here and I've added all the Avada form elements to it. Let's just go through them. The first Avada form element is the checkbox field element. As the name implies, this element is basically used to allow users to check a box. You can have one option or multiple. If you want a user to check a box to say they agree to something, try the consent field element instead. The checkbox field element is better with multiple options as users can select as many options as they want. You can also make this a required field and choose whether users can select a range of checkboxes or they must select all. You can add options manually to this element, select options from the predefined lists or bulk add your own lists. You can also assign a value to each option by turning on this show values option. As with most form elements, there is a field label and a field name to set at the very top, as well as the ability to add a tooltip and a tab index option for controlling the flow of fields in a form. With this element as well, there is a stacked or floated option for controlling whether options go down the page or across. Here on the project budget form, in the how did you hear about us section, is an example of a non-required checkbox element with multiple checkboxes. The next element is the consent field element. This is a great element for getting user consent. It has the usual field label and name and tooltip, and then you can choose the consent type. It can be a checkbox that people tick, or it can be implicit consent. If you choose a checkbox, the box can be checked by default or not, and you can of course make it a required field. Very handy little element. You can see an example of it in the reservations form here at the bottom. The next form element is the date field element. This element allows the user to select a date from a date picker. Again, the usual options are to be found such as field label, name, required field, as well as placeholder and tooltip text. And you can also choose which date picker to use. There is a lightweight custom date picker turned on by default, but you can limit that to desktop or turn it off altogether, in which case the native browser date picker will be used. You can also select an icon and set a tab index and you can also find the usual CSS class and ID fields. You can see examples of the date field element in the hotel reservation form here, with the check in and check out dates. I can just click in the field and the date picker pops up. The email field element is the next form element, and one that is used in almost every form. It is a very simple element that accepts and validates an email address. It has all the usual options and needs very little configuration other than giving it a field label and name and deciding whether it needs to be required or not, which it usually is. You can also add placeholder text, a tooltip and an icon if wanted. And if you want more advanced options, you can also specify an allowed input pattern and force matching input. The next element is the hidden field element. This is an advanced form element and basically what this does is carry a value in the form that is not visible to the user. This might be a page ID or the browser being used or many other things. You can use JavaScript in the field value option, or alternatively you can select dynamic content and select a value to be attached to the form. As I said, it's a bit advanced. If you don't know what you're doing here, you probably don't need it. You can see an example of this form element at work in the Avada car dealer pre-built site, in the search form on the home page. You won't see it on the front end, of course, as it's a hidden field. The honeypot field element is another invisible field element, and is designed to help identify spam bots. A honeypot is added to the form that the user can't see due to CSS or JavaScript which hides the field. So basically if a spam bot fills in a field that valid users can't see, this alerts us to their activity. So if the honeypot field is filled in, we can confidently reject the form as spam. To use this element, simply add it to your form. No configuration is necessary. Following this is the image select field element. This is in the form of a parent and child element. In the children tab you add the images from which a user can select. This can also be done in bulk in the general tab. With this element you can determine if multiple or just a single image can be selected, the width and height of the displayed images, the active and inactive border colors, border size, border radius, 
whether they should be stacked or floated, plus the usual form element options. This element isn't used in any of the pre-built forms, but can be used any time you want your users to be able to pick from a range of images. The notice element is next, which comes with default success and error messages. This element should be used in all forms when the form confirmation type option in the form options is set to display message. This is a simple element that shows the appropriate message when the form has been submitted. You can of course customize your messages to display whatever message you like. The element is invisible on the front end by default and only displays when a form is submitted. It also displays in the place you add it to the form. So if you add it for example to the top of a long form, the page will scroll back to the top and display the message upon submission. Generally though it's probably best placed above or below the submit button. The colors for the success and error messages come from the global options for the alert element. If we head to the global options, Avada builder elements and alert, we can see the colors come from the error background and accent color and the success background and accent color. So if you want to change them for the forms, this is where you do it. Okay, the next element is the number element. Apart from the usual options, you can set a minimum and a maximum value. This could be used to register the number of guests at an event or the number of products to purchase or many other things. Okay, the password field element is next. And this is a simple text field that records a password but doesn't show it on the front end. If we look at the login pre-built form, we can see an example of the password field element here. We can see it doesn't display what we have typed. You can also use this form element twice to get users to confirm the password. The phone number field element comes next, and this is a numeric field used to collect mobile or landline numbers. It does not accept spaces or letters. Examples of this element can be found in several of the pre-built forms, including the sign-up form and the retail form. The radio field element is next. This is pretty much identical to the checkbox element, with the one exception that users can only select one option with this element. This is perfect for when you want a specific answer from a preset range of options. Here we can see several examples of this element in the survey pre-built form, in the colored sections here. Following this is the range field element. This is similar to the number element in that it allows a user to choose a number, but with this element the number is selected via a slider control between the set minimum and maximum values. You can also determine the range step value and a default value. In that way you might have a range between 1 and 100 and set the default at 30 or anywhere else. There is one other unique option and that's the orientation, where you can set the value to go from the left to right or the other way around. You can see an example of this element in the project budget pre-built form, where it has been used as a way of selecting the project budget. The next form is the rating field element. You can set a maximum rating limit between 1 and 10, choose the icon to be used, and select the icon size, color, and hover color. Otherwise there are the usual form element options. This has been used on the survey form here, with the option of choosing from 1 to 5 stars. The recapture element follows this. If you see an error like this when you add the element, it's because for this element to work, you have to configure recapture on your site first. If we head to global options, Google recapture, you can select which version you want to use and add the corresponding site key and secret key. With these added, the element shows where it will display, but this will only be seen on the front end. The options for this element will also change depending on the version of recapture selected in the global options. For more information about how to configure recapture, please see the link document. The select field element is next. This element has the same options as the checkbox and radio field elements, and like them provides a way for users to choose an option, this time from a set of predefined choices that display in a dropdown. This is particularly useful for things like choosing your date of birth, or which state you live in, etc. If I click on bulk predefined, you can see the various predefined choices we could add into the form like the countries of the world, the days of the week, the months of the year, the US states, the years going back a century, and the days of the month. You can also bulk add your own choices in the bulk add section, with or without values. You can see an example of this element in the club membership form, where there are several instances of the element, one for users to select their date of birth, and also one to select their state. Okay, we're down to the last five form elements. This next one is probably the most important of all, as it is the submit button element. This is a button element of sorts, and so it has most of the same options a regular button element has, with the exception of the link URL, button.
button target, modal window anchor and element visibility options. You can style the element as you like, and for the submission method, head to the form options and under submission you set what happens to the data when the submit button is clicked. To get the email sent to you or a coworker, or to set up an auto reply, this is configured on the notifications tab of the Avada form options. See the Avada form options doc linked below to read more about the possible submission types and setting notifications for your submissions. Another regularly used form element comes next, the text field element. This of course allows users to add text to the form and is used for very common fields like first name, last name, etc. The only unique options are the ability to set minimum required and maximum allowed characters. This element is used in most of the pre-built forms for names and other simple input fields. The text area field element of course is very similar but provides a multi-line text box for extended amounts of information, such as the message field. In this element, the unique option is the ability to set the text area row value, which is the number of empty text rows that display, thereby making the input area larger or smaller. I'll just change this to 12 and we can see it grow immediately. This form element is found in most of the Avada Studio forms, except perhaps for login and sign up forms, and is the main form element to use to get unsolicited information from the user. The penultimate form element is the time field element. Much like the date field element, this provides a custom picker to select a specific time, or you can just use the browser default. You can also set a 12 hour or a 24 hour clock. You can see an example of this element in the reservation form, where you can use the arrows to select a time, or just add them in manually. The last form element is the upload field element. This of course allows your users to upload files with the form submission. The two unique options for this element are the ability to control the maximum file upload size, and the allowed extensions. The default is 2 megabytes, but you can increase it all the way to 100 megabytes if needed. You can see an example of this element in the project budget pre-built form where it is used to allow users to upload project assets. Okay, that's the Avada form elements. These elements provide a rich range of possibilities when building and designing your Avada forms. For more information on Avada forms in general, please follow the links below. Okay, this concludes our video on the Avada form builder elements. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.